Brothers and sisters in Christ, as we prepare to offer to Almighty God our morning sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Father's forgiveness, for it's full of gentleness and compassion. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done, in what I've failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask, blessed Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Spirit, we dare to call our Father. Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rendering the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was fire but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ. I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I wish, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites. Theirs the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship and the promises. Theirs the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord.
a proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and precede him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came towards them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once, Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk in the water towards Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind had died down, and those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God, the Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and my dear sisters in Christ, in today's second reading, St. Paul reminds us that the worship of God is a great gift. It is God's great gift to us as a covenant God. As a God of the covenant, God makes promises, He promises blessings, and always leaves a token. And we have this token of God's worship. And that token reminds us that while in life, and death may swallow up our civil and natural union. Our spiritual union will survive death. Our spiritual union is the greatest of all union, and thereby God gives us this token that we will not be swallowed up by death. No matter how far, no matter how hard it pursues us, and at times overtakes us, nevertheless, this union will survive. Among God's worship, the Psalms are very beautiful. It's the ancient liturgy, and there we have, and by them, and through them, we have this great communion with the church of old. The Psalms are beautiful. Prophecy, canticles, prayer, hymns, they're filled with great wisdom and great counsel. Among our worship today, just before the greatest prayer and our most solemn prayer in our liturgy, the great Hosanna, we will say that the glory of God fills the earth. We can find his glory in heaven and on earth. The 19th Psalm articulates and keeps that refrain. And there in that Psalm, it reminds us, it says, the heavens proclaim the glory of God. And the firmament, the earth, proclaim it works, its works. And day unto day, they take up the story. Night unto night, they make this message known. No speech, no word, no voice is heard. Yet that message extends to the bound of the earth. What is our responsibility in this great liturgy which creation gives to God? Our responsibility and our duty is to take those sounds and those praises that creation sings to God of his glory, of his goodness, his justice, and all of it. And we articulate it and give us his voice. The message today, faith requires a faithful witness. Faith is established by faithful witnessing. Faith is secured and nourished by faithful witness. And the earthquakes, and the wind, and the tempest, all of them give a faithful witness to God. They prepare his path. That's what they do. As we see in today's first reading, this great procession of natural things that oftentimes 
gives us and calls us to fear. Yet what they do in God's grand scheme, they have their work to play. What they do, they prepare his path. They are his ministers. And we likewise must be faithful witnesses. One of the great beauty of Elijah, Elijah was a faithful witness of God. And as sacred scripture reveals, and Christ will say, and the psalmist will say, who will see the face of God for the pure of heart? And Elijah was a faithful witness, and he came to the mountain of God to see him, and God will see him. When we come to this place, what God calls his mountain, do we come with the intention to see him? And if we come with the intention to see him, we will see him. But as today's readings point out, how first is our witnessing? Are we faithful witness of God? Because we must be faithful witnesses. If we are to be faithful witnesses, the Christian ethic is important. The divine ethic is important. And if I may set the context of our ethics in terms of the work ethic today, I don't know about you, but it annoys me. I go into a store waiting for service and someone believes that their text messages and their personal phone or whatever it is while they're working is most important. I find the same thing with my students. The idea, for example, of getting a grade and knowing that I worked and I labored for it doesn't matter anymore. Just give me the grade. How I get there is not important. Same thing in baseball. What happens today is about who gets the best contract. It's no longer about the love of the game. It's quite different. The ethic is quite different. And while today we may go to our works and our labor, whatever it may be, as parents, whatever the case may be, but we don't pay oftentimes attention to the witnessing that we make, the constancy in which we attend our responsibilities and our duties, the diligence we exercise. And so what we do is the day goes over, and the day is over, my eight days is over, eight hours is over, my 40-day week, given my paycheck. Never thought for a moment did I really spend that 40 hours and my eight hours a day doing and be faithful and diligent to the task at hand? Was I a faithful, diligent, constant worker? And therefore this reward that I get, my just do. Or is it simply, at the end of the day, it matters not how I do it. The paycheck is all that's important. But that's not the Christian ethic. It is not God's way either. One of the great beauty we have to look at today's readings is in the divine ethic and Christian ethic. The work itself is its reward. Our faithful witness is itself the reward. In other words, it's not that I attend God's worship. God, I come to Mass every Sunday, therefore give me my reward. And God would say, but how did you attend my worship? What was the diligence did you exercise? The graces I gave? Where was the constancy? Where is it? Because that's not God's ethic. What faithful witnessing, as today's readings, first reading points out, it is while we are doing that faithful work that the grace is given. It's during that work, the constancy that we apply, the diligence that we exercise, the faithfulness that we do, and God sees that, and that's what he rewards. The work itself is its reward. How it's done is important. And so while for the world it doesn't matter how we get there, just as we get there, in the Christian ethic, in God's mind, it matters how you get there. 
It matters. And if we are to see the face of God, as the psalmist points out, and the book of the Psalms reminds us, the pure of heart. My great lament as a Catholic, as a priest, as I often say, we don't grasp the weight of the word faith. We don't grasp the gravity of the word. The sacred trust it is, because when we're people of faith, we're diligent, we're constant, we're faithful in whatever task we're given. And therefore, they should not and we should not be afraid of the word. To be a person of faith, it is a great virtue to possess. We should not be ashamed or be afraid of it, no matter what the world may believe. And if they believe that to be a person who is diligent and constant and faithful in what we do to our promises and to our vows and whatever we undertake in every endeavor, and they believe that it is stupid and ridiculous, the joke is on them. The reflection is on them. The judgment is on them. And in calling us, ridiculous and call it useless no the joke is on them because now i know your heart i know precisely your character faithfulness and our witnessing must be important in this world today there is this strive and drive for peace and for justice and harmony and today's first reading points out how is that attained? The world, we're not going to attain it by setting the world ablaze. It is not going to be there. They have their work in God's purpose. But on the mountain of God today, it was not in the earthquake and the tempest and all that stuff that God was to be found. And today in the world in which we live, we believe that somehow, and I can't for the love of God, I would like someone to explain to me the rational. I would, if they were for a moment, I would go along. But to appeal to man's most base instinct, to appeal to his malice and to incite him to malice, to appeal to his anger and incite him to anger, and say, in this environment, in this soil, we'll grow love and friendship and peace and quiet. I don't, for the love of God, see it. I would like the man to explain it to me and give me the reason. And so today, in this story of the lives of God, reminds us, I am not found in those. He will not be found. Not in those. And therefore, to set the world ablaze, always constantly stirring the water all the time and think we're accomplishing the work of peace and justice. No, it is madness. It is irrational. And in the Christian ethic, what God lays out today in this great procession of his worship, what God calls an appeal. If we're going to do the Christian ethic and be a faithful witness, what we appeal to as Christians is not man's most basic instinct. What we incite is not his basic and evil impulses. What God does, peace to his conscience, he appeals to his heart, and when you appeal to a man's heart and his conscience, it's done in kindness, with love, with gentleness, with graciousness. God who seeks to redeem humanity, that's not his method. And I can't for the love of God. And I ask us as Catholics to be reasonable. 
can in that kind of environment love, peace be fostered and cultivated? It can't. If we're going to incite people to anger, then what we're doing is their anger will consume them. And rather what we do is we sacrifice them to the ego of our ideology and our philosophy, whatever they may be. And God offered one sacrifice for all. That was it. And yes, when we offer ourselves in sacrifice and we're called to do it, but it is a holy oblation to God. The world needs kindness. We don't need any more meanness. And all we have to do is the law of kindness, the golden rule, that's simply do unto others as you'd like them to do unto you. And you and I know that when people's kindness and you encounter it, what a wonderful difference it makes in a day. And when we encounter nastiness and meanness, how upsetting it is. And we're called as Catholics to give a faithful witness to God. Let the world appeal to man's basic instincts. Let him appeal to the worst in them. But what we appeal to, we appeal to the best in them. We appeal to their consciences. We appeal to their hearts. And they do with kindness with gentleness, with love. It is what God did, and it's how he speaks to us. And he was brought to us and came close in the stillness of a night on Christmas morning. His incarnation, the stillness of a night, that's how he's brought close. And so let the world do what they may, what we as Catholics are called, in spite of it all, to do our faithful witness. The world needs a bit of kindness. That's our duty. That's our calling. And we should rise to the occasion. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father of mine, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, where the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God who feeds us in the desert will not turn away from our prayers. That God's people be strengthened by the Eucharist to do his will and climb his mountain, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our For families, that they learn to overcome problems together, and that this be a time of blessing when they grow in friendship, understanding, love, and prayer. We pray to the Lord. Amen. For those who care for the sick and the dying, showing the, the Lord's love in their daily actions, we pray to the Lord. Amen. For the souls of the faithful departed from our parish who have gone before us in faith and love, may they receive the reward of their goodness and let us remember in a special way at this Mass, Martin Dolphin. We pray to the Lord. In the silence of our hearts, we present to God our particular intentions. We pray to the Lord. Faithful God, you give us water in the desert and food for the journey. All we have comes from your hand. We ask for your bounty. 
in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O oh Lord, be pleased to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering, cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to your Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. <laughs> Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, 
and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for men, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant it that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, blessed Saint Margaret, our patron saint, and with all the saints in whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Timothy our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful fall, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom that we hope to enjoy forever, the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord,
for Jesus Christ who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. sisters in Christ, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, in our Lord, For those at home, our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you're present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. But since I'm unable this moment to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. O Lord, may the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Eucharistic minister. of the heavenly host by the power of God cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world see the ruin of souls amen and the Lord be with you may almighty God bless you always Father Son and Holy Spirit and our mass is ended let's go in peace to love and serve God and one another thanks be to God